Good morning. I just wanted to say a few words about the project that Janae and Sarah and other students were involved in because it's an example of what we are trying to encourage as the marriage between um, our college and the community as well as in this case um, the Center for New Media. And my students interviewed um, nine guests at St. Vincent de Paul in Middletown um, and they were able in my counseling class to practice their interviewing skills and then the ultimate piece will be a public awareness piece around homelessness in Middletown. So that's my, just to give you some background as to what this um, project was about. So Sarah and Jeanette. Hi, good morning everyone. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Friday morning. Um, so as Professor Felton said, we did have the opportunity to participate in an interview at St. Paul St. De Vincent, wait, St. Paul De Vincent, sorry, and um, to, to do this Life Stories project. What was interesting was um, when I was in class, when we heard about this project was um, we had two women um, come in and speak about St. Paul De Vincent and give us some, some background just so we understood what we were going to face. And one of the suggestions was to go and have lunch there, which we did. Uh, my partner and I, uh, that was Liza, one of my classmates, we went there and had lunch, so that was an interesting experience. The following week, we had the opportunity to meet Ebony, who um, told us her story about homelessness. And she included her experience and struggles and was very open and honest um, about why she was homeless for a number of years, which was um, due to mental illness as well as substance abuse. The part that I really admired was that she took ownership for what happened. She never blamed anyone. And um, I really admired her courage and strength and her honesty as far as sharing with us so many stories and um, things about her journey. I walked away that day feeling really thankful and grateful for meeting Ebony. Um, we even hugged goodbye after it was over. And it just made me realize how fragile life can be and that any of us can be in that position of homelessness at any time in our lives. Thank you. So for my experience, um, when I first heard about this, that we were going to do this project in school, um, automatically I was excited because this is an avenue that I've never been in before. So I was intrigued very much so. But there was also, you know, those stereotypes that you thought in your head, like, you know, are they going to make excuses? You know, is society like is anyone going to really care to hear what we what they have to say? And you know. Is this going to really make a difference? Um, me and my partner went to the soup kitchen um, earlier before we, the interview and met so many individuals, and they were so nice and they were just like talking to us and very friendly, and, like not trying to hold back, like willing to talk to us like right then and there, um, knowing that we were students, so we weren't, you know, technically part of their community. Um, but when we did the interview piece, um, at, Nervousness, obviously, because you know I didn't really feel like my skills were that great. Like this is the first first time we're interviewing someone, so that part was really great because I was able to get those skills um, that I learned from class. But not only that, to hear their story and knowing that my me just listening was making a difference, um, that meant a lot. I left there frustrated with the system. Not gonna lie, because a lot of a lot of these individuals, yes, they have mental disabilities. Yes, they suffer from some kind of substance abuse. But we gave them labels, and that is it. And they're stuck in their labels. Um, so I really hope that you guys will actually, you know, we're supposed to make this a podcast. Like, everyone is able to hear them because when you give someone, especially these negative labels, you they're trapped in them. And a lot of them have the ability and willingness to want to do better, want to get out their, their circumstances, um, and just are stuck um, unfairly so. Um, so I really am inspired and want to do more um, to help everyone in these situations, because like Sarah said, at any given moment, we could definitely be in that situation, at really any given moment. Um, and that is it. <laughs>
Thank you. I just wanted to ask if anyone has any questions. So we, we have an opportunity to hear some of the um, some of the voices of the people who were interviewed by Sarah and Janae and other students. So well, we just have one um, one 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 sample here. So one sample. We'll see if it works. I don't know if the sound system is on. Let's see. No. Joe, how she would go back to this way if there's no help you know so I would really ask more of what because I'm just that person just what can I do what more can I do I agree with what Janae said um, as well in my experience my interview I was able to meet someone that is currently not homeless so it would be interesting to be able to go back and actually interview somebody that is you know because I feel that in that experience I got to hear a wonderful story and a journey of a woman that I never would have met if it wasn't for this class. Um, but at the same time, she was so forthcoming, it was so easy to, to have that interview because um, she shares her story on a regular basis. So it, it'd be interesting to go back and have someone that maybe wasn't as easy to draw information from and see what that would be like. Um, Sarah and Janae, uh, you wanna share a little bit about the process, how we came up with the interview questions and and uh, some of the examples of questions that you actually used? Um, so how we, well, I feel like we did most of them, but uh, how we came up with the questions and kind of like in the class went over a bunch of questions. We didn't, I know that they didn't want to be too personal because you didn't want to like go off like the main topic which was homelessness and how it affected you. So that part, I feel like as a, like a class we kind of went over some stuff and then we practiced with one another um, in the classroom setting with our partners to kind of get a, a feel of like how we would actually be setting up an interview. Um. Um, one of the questions that I uh, really appreciated asking Ebony, who was my interviewee, was um, what would you share with other people in your experience, um, as well as how did you get here, you know, what happened, and what have your experiences been like it just, um, you don't realize when you sit down and meet with someone how many questions you can ask and want them to, to have the right meaning and sound open and not close questions and that's important. Um, so they know that we're really caring and, and feeling to their experience. I think we could try again here <laughs> one, one more time. I think I figured out the volume problem. Hi, Ebony, my name is Sarah Lombardo. Um, thank you so much for meeting with us today. Mm -hmm. This Hi, is I'm Liza. Hi, Liza. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and to let you know, we're here as part of Middlesex Community College Life Stories Project that we're doing in order to share with other students your story. And we really appreciate the information that you're going to tell us today. So, if you would be so kind um, to share your first and last name. My name is Ebony Lockhart. I'm an African American. Um, sure, I'm like a share. six years old. Um, Thank you. You look good for your age. <laughs> Forty-six. Five children, five grandchildren. Wow. Wow, well, that's wonderful. Um, if you would please share some of your experience with homelessness. Um, well, 
like I said, I'm 46 years old, and um, I first became homeless in my early 20s, um, which meant that I was homeless over half of, uh, over half of my life. Um, at that time, you know, like I said, I stayed, uh, was suffering from mental illnesses that weren't diagnosed, and you know, I just had a lot of a lot of issues, and I um, started self-medicating. I was on drugs and, and alcohol, and you know, my life was conform to these very streets right here, um, which uh, led to a lot of stuff, you know, loss of custody of my children, you know, I was just making a lot of poor decisions and, you know, couldn't get it together for a while, and uh, I lost custody of my children, and it just sent me on this uh, spiral. I was just out in the streets, and I was homeless, and, uh, you know, it was very hard to wake up every day and, you know, I, I want to go look for work or I want to get myself together, but my task was to find out where I was going to sleep at, mm -hmm. you know, that night. So that's what my day was consumed of. And, and then trying to do that, you don't know, always allow yourself to be in situations where people have the best interest at heart, you know, and it causes you to do things and put yourself in uncompromising positions, you know, to as a woman, you know, sure. you do things that are not ladylike and stuff like that. And it was very uh, uh, humiliating um, experience. Um, I lived in uh, abandoned buildings. Um, I slept in hallways, um, and abandoned cars. Um, I re can recall one time I slept on a, um, what do you call it? A, it's like a, where you wait for a bus. Dunlop Terminal? Yeah, and terminal. I slept on the outside of that. And it, it was cold, it wasn't a lot of snow, but it was winter time and it was cold. And, um, you know, um, I got sleeping in, in the bathrooms of uh, restaurants or in the library, you know. I did whatever I had to do, you know, it was just really degrading um, experience, but I'm not homeless anymore. So. That's something to be proud of. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Sarah and Janae? Thank you. Thank you, everyone.